Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our fourth week of online learning. But before we are going to start our discussion, we will try to recall what our lesson last week. It is all about understanding the middle and late adolescents. If you will be asked some question about yourself, can you answer them quickly? If someone asks you to describe yourself or share a slice of your life in class so that others can get to know you more, where do you begin your story? How are you going to respond to this query, who am I? Some people can give strength, answer to personal question, or easily narrate snippets of their lives, but others may need more time to think about what to say to describe oneself. For others, the question lingers and finding the answers become a lifelong journey. The answers are unique to each question, yet all you should lead to a pearl of discovery about oneself. Self-discovery is an essential personal fast. It is a case on to personal development. Knowing who you are are forms of building blocks to become the person you want to be or you are meant to be. Whatever way you see yourself, change is what the remain constant in the whole process of growth. Recall who you were. Now think about who you are today and try to foresee who will you become in the future. Change make all this happen. This concept is not a new thing. During the ancient time, the idea that change is inherent in nature had already surfaced. One great thinker who thought about it is, is Heraclitus of Epesos on 530 to 470 before Christ. He is an ancient great philosopher who held that nature is in a constant stock of blood. Everything changes through time. Look at yourself. You are living proof that there are more changes to happen in the future. Are you ready? No man ever step in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and he's not the same man, according to Heraclitus of Ephesus. Traditionally, a philosopher is thought of as a lover of wisdom, an intellectual who has devoted time to study the meaning of life has contributed in the field of philosophy in areas like logic, ethics, metaphysics, epistemology, or, or rather theory of knowledge. Among others, philosophers were the first one who talked about change. Adolescence is a crucial period in the development of an individual, it marks the major transition stage, the bridge, childhood to adulthood. The middle and late adolescence is between the ages of 15 to 21. This is the time of one's life that is full of excitement and challenges. For an adolescent, the world is expanding, exciting, and demanding of energy. A major hallmark of this period is the quest for the identity and individuality through assertion of independence, exercise of personal decisions in relations to what one wants to be in the future, and establish meaningful relationship with others. The question for these are, what do I want to be in the future? What course? Should I take what job will fulfill me? Should I study abroad or I am already to leave home? To answer this question, it is important to know yourself. Think about your interests, skills, ability, and preferences now. As a take a point, let us understand and what is typically happening during this period of your life and let us see where you are.
These are our topic last meeting or last third week of our online learning. And now, we are going to discuss about man as a wholeness. But before this, we are going to read our objective today's discussions. Our objectives are identify the wholeness and balance life, explain the thought, feelings, and body interrelated, and answer different questions. These are objectives that we are going to attain after our discussion. Compared to Zhang Zhan approach to wholeness, just how theory takes a body orientation or physical self integrated with psychological functioning in treating an individual. This integrated approach brings the some body and psyche of mind come into light. As explained by Keeper 1987, an integrated approach aims to bring together all aspects of the person so that the person can experience himself or herself as unitary organism. This holistic view that Gestalt adapt sees the whole as greater than the sum of its part. In short, man is a whole being and functioning unit. Looking inside and paying attention to oneself with the intention of seeking holistic personal development, you will need to look into key aspects of yourself. I am whole and steady. Wholeness and balance in life are thoughts, feelings, and body interrelated. Man as a whole being. Man as a multifaceted being is essentially a whole person at first breath of life. Our growing number of activities starts to divide our attention and fragment our life like pizza cut into pieces. Consequently, this fragmented way of looking at things may lead us to a divided self wherein we tend to treat each component separately. If a certain part of the body aches, we treat it with medicines. If we are sad or hurting, we find ways to release emotions by way of crying or screaming. If we lose hope, we pray or seek guidance from others. For example, you may feel heaviness on your chest when emotionally hurt or exhausted. It may also turn around. If we are not physically well, our emotional state may also change. An illness can bring depression or change in behavior. What is wholeness? Wholeness is essentially is an integral sense of integration. The different aspects of the individual, mental, emotional, physical, social, and spiritual are in harmony or balance. This harmony or feeling of balance is important for self-esteem and self-actualization. Wholeness is a transcendent life goal. It is a lifelong pursuit. Emit and Greenhand, 1991, wrote that we are all the pilgrims, rather, on a journey toward wholeness and fullness of life. It is an ideal human goal given its good implication to the total functioning of the individual as well as meaning of life. Carl Jung, 1985-1961, is one of the few classical thinkers and psychologists during his time who seriously put forward the concept of whole 
nest in theory and practice. At the time, psychologists like Freud were busy looking into instinct, while others were interested in understanding behaviors. Zhang recognized that man is essentially a whole being. Interesting, he viewed life to be full of opposites, day and night, happiness and sadness, and birth and death. Looking at man, Zhang significantly noticed the split in the self as well and recognized the need to store the fragmented pieces of self in the hope of being out the uniqueness of the individual. Man striving toward self-realization, awareness of one's potential, and recognition of personal uniqueness are ways to becoming whole. Simply put, wholeness is Jung's definition of psychological attained by way of individuation process. What is this so-called individuation progress? Singer, 1972, they tell it in his book, Boundaries of the Soul, is path of knowledge, rather self-knowledge, move along two tracks. The first is designed to help people recognize and fulfill their own unique potentials. The second track requires it deals is the conscious realization and integration of all the possibilities contained within individual allows people to find their own direction and live according to their own sense of purpose offers a way toward restoring faith in themselves as they establish their own values another psychological theory that recognizes man as a whole being is gestaltism gestalt theory holds psychological distress mental problem are caused significantly by the split What is wholeness? Wholeness is essentially an integral sense of integration, the different aspect of the individual, mental, emotional, physical, social, and spiritual, are in harmony or balance. This harmony or feeling of balance is important for self-esteem and self-actualization. Wholeness is a transcendental life goal. It is a lifelong pursuit. Emit and Grand Hunt, 1991, wrote that we are all pilgrims on the journey towards wholeness and fullness of life. It is an ideal human goal, given its good implication to the total functioning of the individual as well as meaning of life. Carl Jung, 1985, rather 1975 to 1961, is one of the few classical thinkers and psychologists during his time whole seriously put toward the concept of wholeness in theory and practice at the time. Psychologists like Freud were busy looking into instinct while others are interested in understanding behaviors. Compared to the Jungian approach to wholeness, just self theory takes a body orientation or physical self, integrated with psychological functioning and treating an individual. This integrated approach brings in the same body or psyche or mind to come into light. As explained by Keeper 1987, an integrated approach aims to bring together all aspects of the person so that the person can experience himself or herself as a unitary organism. This holistic view that Gestalt adapts since the whole as greater than some of its part. In short, man is a whole being and functioning unit. Looking inside and paying attention to oneself 
with the attention of seeking holistic personal development, you will need to look into key aspects of yourself. Aspect of holistic development, developing the whole person, and physical development. Physical development points to the body and its functioning. Growth spurt are at its peaks brought about by hormonal changes and sexual characteristics become prominent. This is the time when you become conscious of your body and strive to be in a good shape. Thus, attention to your body is important as it is key instrument and ally in working out plans in the life. Hence, it is important that you take care of it and keep it well. Wellness should be a primary concern as you grow and as you head toward becoming the best that you can be. How do you keep yourself safety? The first one, watch what you eat. Nutritious food gives you energy and good health. The kind of food you eat does not only affect your health, it also affects your mood, mental well-being, and energy. For example, chocolate and coffee are energy busters. Sweet can make you hyper. Coffee can keep you awake, but too much intake of sweets, you're functioning as it can stop you from doing what you need to do as pain gets in the way. It is important to eat nutritious food. Throff and Castellucci, 2011, enlist the major nutrients we need. Protein for growth, maintenance, and repair of tissues, example, fish, meat, eggs, dairy products, on tofu. Carbohydrates for energy and dietary fibers for digestion, example, cereal, rice, bread, fruits, and vegetables. Vitamins and minerals for life and growth, example, calcium for strong bones, vitamin D for absorption of calcium, sodium for fluid balance, vitamin B complex for nerves, vitamin A for healthy skin, water to help transport the nutrients throughout the body and remove waste product. It also helps regulate body temperature and fats, preferably unsaturated like omega-3 as they are healthier, to store energy, provide insulation, and dissolve certain vitamins. Keep your food intake in check. Let us see what your favorite food or snack at least gives you. Identify three of your favorite food. Check out their nutritional content. What nutrients do you get from them? See their label. If not available, research on their nutritional value. Another thing to consider in relation to food is keeping good eating habits. According to Adele Davis, 1903 to 1974, a nutritionist once said, Eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. It points out the importance of taking good heavy breakfast to give your energy for the day, eating in moderation in midday, and keeping your meal light at night. The next one, keep yourself fit and strong. Exercise. In this digital age, when almost everything is button, push, press, or wipe, things come at the instant. While it takes life easier, it has also made man physical inactive. A sedentary life can make you less energetic and flexible. 
When you regularly you exercise, you burn more calories and maintain on the other hand, makes you at risk in health weight. If overweight, you are prone to health problems like hypertension, diabetes, or cardiovascular disease. Being underweight, on the other hand, make you at risk for developing problem like osteoporosis. The next one, avoid abuse of your body. Get good sleep at night. At your age, when new activities are plentiful, getting enough sleep tends to be less of a priority. This should not be the case. Our body has its own natural rhythms. As our body works hard, it also needs time to rest. Sleep gives the body the much-needed opportunity to recover energy spent on your activities. Lack of sleep may result in fatigue, irritability, or inefficiency in performance. Avoid smoking or drinking alcohol. Cigarettes and alcohol are tempting, temporary pleasure that never give good results. Worse, if engaging with them becomes a habit or addiction, you put your health at risk. The effect may not surface immediately, but you will eventually suffer the consequences that may shorten your life expectancy. Social drinking is acceptable if it is moderation. However, when alcohol consumption affects your normal and affected functioning in doing school, work, relating with people or doing other activities, it creates problem in your life. Too much intake of alcohol can dull your sensation, affect your judgment, and bodily coordination. Fatal effects may include accidents. Long-term smoking may result in lung problems, cancer, or heart and respiratory diseases. There are other health problems associated with smoking. Worse, even non-smokers are affected when constantly exposed to cigarette smoke. You don't only put yourself at risk, you also risk the life of others. Avoid doing abuse. There are prospective drugs and non-prospective ones. The latter refer to drugs that are not prescribed by medical doctors and abuse. Example are marijuana, cocaine, and methamphetamine. There are various drugs that create different effects or effects. Dependence on drug is a hazard that puts the user in the grave thunder. It affects psychology social functioning that harms the body, alters behavior, and changes mood that is damaging to relationships, school performance, and quality of work output. Cognitive Development Cognitive refers to patterns of thinking which include reasoning, ability to learn, remembering, and problem solving. As a learner hoping to have a good career someday, the development of your cognitive skills is important. Your ability to learn will greatly determine the height of literacy you can attain and work you can achieve. Three important cognitive skills you need to develop are remembering, critical thinking, and problem solving. What is remembering? Remembering is function of the brain that depends on short-term or long-term memory. If you cannot remember, learning becomes impossible. Troops and Castellosi 2011 listed ways to improve your memory. The first one is repetition. 
going over a material repeatedly improves your memory. As the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. If you keep repeating something, it increases your changes of remembering on. Organization is organizing things or ideas in your head helps. You may classify things according to their common features. You can also work on making meaningful association with new information at hand. It may another idea, a song, color, or people. Think of a way to connect them with something special or important will help you to easily retrieve the information from your memory. Of course, making a list or notes is a time-tested strategy to help you remember. The next one is the mnemonics. It is a device that aids your memory. Acronyms and dream words are kinds of mnemonic that works. What is critical thinking? It is an opinion is based on your values and assumption that may not necessarily be true for others. Moreover, objectively is important. To think critically, you have to avoid personal biases that cloud your mind. It is come from the word criticus, meaning discerning or judgment, and criterion, meaning standards. Hence, critical thinking implies discerning judgment based on standards. It requires ability to reason out logical thinking, infer, analyze, interpret, and explain. Additionally, you will need to discern between facts and opinions. A fact is something that is true and can be proven. Problem solving depends so much on your critical thinking abilities. It is called ideas. A stand for Five-step critical thinking general problem-solving process. I stand for identify the problem and set priorities. Step 2. D stands for determine relevant information and depends understanding. The next one is the E, enumerate options and anticipate consequences. The step 3. And next one, the letter A, assess the situation and make a preliminary decision. Step 4. And lastly, synchronize the process and self-correct as needed. The step 5. It is called the ideas. Why problem solving depends so much on your critical thinking abilities. What is socio-emotional development? Motos anima is said to be the Latin description for emotions. It means the spirit that moves us by Hassan 2012. In need, emotion or feelings as a common word to use for it are kinds of force from within that affect us, feelings and emotional life in general form and important part of us. They color our world as we respond to different life experiences. What then is emotion? It is hard to pin down an outright definition for it, but there is an agreement in terms of components that make up an emotion. What is a cosmological component? Emotion involve bodily arousal, Something goes on the brain in the automatic nervous system as well as in the endocrine system. Here is an example of what happens to our bodies when reacting to a stressful event. First one is the eye, dilated, the mouth dry, skin goes bumps, palms sweaty, and heart increase rate. 
Behavioral component, this is the outward expression of emotions as seen in your facial expressions, body language, and manner of speaking. Growing up, our emotional responses develop from simple eager, fear, and joy to more distinct emotions. Kohn, 2001, decided Robert Plopchik's primary emotion. Aside from those three, which include surprise, sadness, disgust, anticipation, and acceptance. The next one is the cognitive component. It refers to the subjective conscious experiences of the person. How you interpret a situation affects your emotions. Thus, your emotional reaction may vary from others depending on how they see and understand an event. Another one is the spiritual development. What is spiritual development? Thoughts, feelings, behaviors, working together as one. A holistic perspective that sees man as a whole, unitary being agrees with the notion of equilibrium, harmony or balance that the man strives to achieve. Probably the concept closest to ordinary language is being complete and stable. What will complete you when you feel stable? At this point in your life, your studies hold great promise in realizing your dreams through the career choice you make. To do so, it is imperative. Strive to develop the key aspect of yourself, physical, cognitive, social, or socio-emotional, and spiritual. In the process, your thoughts, feelings, and behavior should work together and reflect the change that will make you grow. This should be result in ability to manage emotions and reflect good actions. Helpful tips in working together as one. Students guide to living a balanced life. First one, Take care of your body, keep it strong and healthy, it is the track of your dreams and your alley in your journey. The next one, keep your mind at work, fill it with wisdom, be creative and use it to improve your life and the world. The next one, let your emotions lead you to doing what is good and express them in ways that build relationship. Lastly, believe in God, in the beauty of life, and in the inherent goodness of others. As you do your best, leave you to the God the rest. Our discussion is done. Any questions and clarifications? Okay, if there's none... Please see our site or link to https double slash rather guyetf.com slash e-learning or you may now contact my number at 0975-270-8093 or 0951-3032-796. Once again, thank you, God bless, and enjoy reading. I'm Miss Quisel Jane D. Carion, your teacher at Personal Development. Once again, good afternoon.